All right, guys, so pretty excited about this video. So what you got in front of you right now is the Atom Stack A70 Max. And as you guys can see, this laser engraver cutter is huge. So this is Atom Stack's 800 millimeter by 850 millimeter laser engraver. And this is going to allow you to do larger projects than your typical laser engraver that's limited to 400 to 450 millimeters. Also a huge benefit to having such a large work area besides doing a larger projects is if you're doing batch products, so say you're doing a bunch of coasters or something like that, you're gonna be able to get twice as much productivity done with such a large working area. Not only do you have a bigger service area to work on, but the A70 Max also includes two lasers one is a 35 watt and one is a 70 watt laser now with the 70 watt laser they're saying it's the world's first i'm not sure if there's any other companies out there with a 70 watt laser but with the 70 watt laser in the atom stack a70 max it's claiming that it can cut up to 28 millimeter wood in one pass and 25 millimeter black acrylic just to give you guys another example so this is a project that i did on one of my smaller engravers and then this is a project I did on the Atom Stack A70 Max. Huge difference in size there. So if you guys want to do bigger projects, the A70 Max is going to be a great option for those bigger projects. And as you guys can see, I was being conservative when I actually did this project. Still a lot of room on each side and then top and bottom where I could have went even bigger. So along with the huge work area, Two lasers, 70 watt and 35 watt laser. You also get the Atom Stack Air Assist, and this does have a knob on the top to adjust the airflow. Also, with this Air Assist, it has the intelligent Air Assist technology built into this. So, right now, as you guys will see, the Atom Stack is currently on, power is going to it, and then the Air Assist is turned on. So, I got the knob turned all the way up. But as you guys can see, this is not on. The air assist won't turn on until the engraving starts, which is pretty cool because a lot of the air assist on my other engravers, once you turn this on, the air assist on, it would just start running. So even if you weren't ready to engrave or anything, you had to turn the air assist on and off separately from when you're doing your projects. Also, if you want the air assist on or off, you can turn it off in your editing software. You're going to get a huge power brick here. It does have its own screen and this can be used offline so all you got to do is pop in SD card with some files on it and then you can use this screen to do projects offline you got your on and off button you got an auto focus button and then they also do send this out this is a tool to use to do manual focus so on the top there it's got fixed focus block engrave and it's got a couple different settings there for cutting material depending on the thickness. And of course, you also get some cool safety glasses. Make sure you wear these when you're doing your projects. You don't want to ruin your eyesight. Also, since we're talking about safety, I went ahead and popped off the little screen here. If you go into settings, this is a touch screen. As you guys can see, it does have some safety features built in, like most engravers. It has the tilt detection and a flame detection. And you can turn those on and off if you want to. It's got a few other things. It's got your autofocus, touch sound, resume engraving, and then it's got your firmware and stuff here that you can check. So a few options that you got going on. If you do trigger one of those safety features, there's a little LED light right there. You're going to hear an audible alert. That's going to blink red, and it's going to stop engraving or cutting. And then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to turn the device off and then back on to reset it. Also, the Atom Stack A70 Max ships out with nice USB cord here. So it's got your USB-C and then it's got USB-A depending on your laptop if you want to use editing software. And the cool thing about Atom Stack is they have the Atom Stack Studio, which you're looking at right here, which is pretty decent. Not too bad. I like it because... I don't get really deep and detailed in my projects, but if you do, the A70 Max does support laser gerbil and light burn. And then Atom Stack also provides an app. So if you're using your tablet or a phone, 
that will also work you're just going to connect this wirelessly to your engraver and then you can do a little bit of editing creating projects in the app now for all my projects i use the atom stack studio i actually prefer to use the programs that come with the engraver depending on which engraver you have i don't really use laser gerbil or light burn very much pretty simple diyer so i don't get too technical with all my projects but for the Atom Stack Studio, that seemed to do pretty much about 90% of what I needed it to do when I was creating projects. There's one thing in the Atom Stack Studio editing software that I couldn't find. It might be in there, but I just couldn't find was when you drop an image onto the grid and say you wanted to remove a background from it or remove certain portions of it. I didn't see that anywhere in the Atom Stack Studio. So maybe they can do an update in the future and that's something that they can add. So with Halloween right around the corner, I figured it'd be kind of cool to do some Halloween decor. So I got a nice little picture right here I pulled off the internet. And we're in the Atom Stack Studio. So as you guys can see, you can play with the brightness a little bit here. You can play with the contrast. You can reverse the colors. So there's a few different things you can do. Over to the right here, you're going to be able to set your power. And they do have some other recommended. So they got recommended power settings and speed settings for different types of wood. And I'm sure they're going to add more as time goes on. A lot of different settings for different types of material. And then also you can go in here and you can save your own settings. So once you do a project, you can save that setting. So we're going to go ahead we're going to engrave this. I'm going to see how it turns out. And I'm going to use the 35 watt laser on this since it's got so much detail. So we're going to drop this down to size to my working area and what I'm engraving it on. And then we'll go ahead and set up the speed and the power. And we'll go ahead and see what this looks like. All right, so I just had this scrap piece of pine laying around. I'm going to cut this to size. We're going to throw this in the engraver, start engraving, and we'll see how it turns out. All right, guys, so there is the finished project. So it actually looks really, really cool. Of course, like I said, this is on pine, so you get all the wood grain and stuff in there. But it's got a not, lot of nice detail. And I could have played with the settings a little bit more, the speed and the power. Because down here I noticed there is a little bit of burning going on. You can also just sand that and get it off of there. But actually pretty impressed with the way it turned out. Not too bad. Like I said, I'm just using some scrap pine that I had laying around. It actually looks really nice. All right, so before I went ahead and did the engraving, one of my suggestions is take a piece of wood that you're going to be engraving on and go ahead and do some test runs on it. I got a bunch of different engravings on here, and then I got the settings that I wrote with a pencil off to the side just to see what the best setting was. Now, of course, as you guys can see, I did you know a handful of tests there. Probably could even dial it in even better, but I did test with the 35 watt laser and then also the 70 watt laser just to kind of test them out. And then I also tested them with the air assist on and off. So of course, this is the air assist off, and then over here is the air assist on. So all these top ones here are 70 watt, and then I did two 35 watt tests. No air assist. 35 watt with air assist same exact settings one just had air assist and one did not so definitely air assist does a good job at keeping the burn down yes i don't know let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about how that turned out i got some other projects here that i also 
did you guys seen that one in the back already so this project was done with the 35 watt laser but these other projects I actually did with the 70 watt laser so you guys seen that one earlier in the video but this was a trick-or-treat sign that I did and if you guys look closely I actually added like a little drop shadow to the letters there just to give it a little bit more of a cooler look so this is not like where it burned over because the shadow is going this way you don't see any of it on this side so it was like a little effect that I gave it, it looks pretty cool and this is just some plywood some more scrap wood that I had laying around but that came out really cool and then over here is another piece of pine I end up painting this also but this came out really really nice also there is an option on the atom stack to turn 3d on or off and I noticed in this one it kind of gave these letters a little bit of a 3d look so what it did is it looks like it engraved deeper in some areas than others kind of like gave it a, a raised look but I thought that turned out really cool also so all I did was I painted the board black threw some orange over it and then I went ahead and engraved it so this inside here is just all the engraving none of the inside like the letters or the bats are painted black but I thought that came out really cool also alright guys so we're gonna do some cuts with the 70 watt laser so this is just some plywood and this comes in at about 15 and a half millimeters so 15.5 millimeters so we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to cut a circle in this in just one pass. Make sure you always wear your safety glasses and make sure you do this in a well ventilated area. Alright, let's go ahead and see what we got here. Alright, so cut all the way through one pass. Definitely got some burning on this side. So I probably could either speed up the laser or maybe turn down the power a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and try this one more time. I went ahead and turned the speed up a little bit. Take a look here. So, as you guys can see, we didn't cut all the way through. So, I might have turned the speed up a little bit too high. So, I'll try it one more time. Now, plywood can be a little bit harder to cut through and dial in than actual solid pine or a solid wood because it's got all the layers. Check this one out. Oh, there we go. Not too bad on the back side. Got a little burning here. Front side looks good. So definitely going to want to play with your settings. Use a scrap piece of wood. So these two projects here, this one and this one, I actually not only engraved them, but I used the engraver to cut these out also. What I ended up doing is I did two passes just at a lower power just to be sure so might want to test that stuff out too all right so we got a solid piece of pine here this should be a little bit easier to cut through and this is coming in at about 19 millimeters I don't know if you guys can see that 19.2 right around 19 millimeters so we'll go ahead and see if we can get through this in one pass. Should have no problem with this. And we'll see what we get. All 
Alright. And looks like we got through. So there we go. Actually looks pretty decent on both sides. I actually had the settings at 100%. And then for the speed it was down to 7. So one pass and it was able to cut it. I don't have anything up to the 28 millimeters to be able to test out for you guys. So depending on what type of wood you're using, you're definitely going to want to do some tests. So grab some scrap of whatever wood you're using, whether you're engraving or you're cutting, because every wood's going to act a little different, whether it's plywood, pine wood, whether you're graving or whether you're cutting. So the best thing to do is always just take a scrap piece and just test on it. All right, guys, so there you go. A rundown of the Atom Stack A70 Max. Pretty cool product here. Definitely a good pickup for those people that want to either increase productivity for their laser engraving or if you want to step into doing larger signs. I think this will be a great pickup. The only downfall that I see with this laser engraver is you're definitely going to need a spot to put this. As you guys can see, I've got my little workbench over here and there's no way that would fit over there. So I had to actually put it on some saw horses and cut a half sheet of 4x8 plywood for this to sit on. So I would say that's probably one of the biggest downfalls is just if you don't have the room for it, it's just not going to work for you. But if you can fit this into your shop or garage, I think that this is going to be a game changer to be able to just do way bigger projects and increase your productivity. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you guys are interested in the Atom Stack A70 Max, I'll go ahead and put some links down there. You can use those links to either get more information or to purchase one of these. Hopefully you guys found the video useful. If you did, smash that like button. If you guys like what I'm doing on my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell. Until the next one, guys, I will talk to you later.